going to take a little break here from Star Trek Fleet Command for a minute so we can talk about our sponsored stream that we chose collectively as a group last Tuesday. If you missed the stream, well, you're, or you're watching this later on YouTube or something, uh, let's go through the game and what we're doing here. So it's called Watcher of Realms. Uh, I'll put the link. The link is right there on the screen. You can click that uh, if you're watching this right now live on Twitch. You can get the link to download it. It is a PC-only game, or at least the PC-only version is what is being part of the sponsorship. I think it may have a mobile version too, but that's not the version that we're playing. Oh, I gotta turn the music off. That's loud. Hang on a second. Uh, settings. I think they're up here. Yeah. Let's turn that stuff off before it scares the crap out of me. Oh, I got an achievement. Hey, hey. Okay, so this is the game that we are currently running a sponsorship for for the next, I think, seven days that are left. Uh, it is a sort of a tower defense type game, uh, but instead of just using towers, you're using heroes. Heroes have different abilities and things like that, so it makes it a little more interesting, kind of a, instead of just putting like a tower out there that shoots a laser beam or whatever the case may be. I don't know if any of you guys ever played a lot of those older tower defense games. Um, I got through one of my <laughs> training classes uh, 10, 15, 15 years ago at this point, uh, playing a tower defense game, myself and a couple of the other people in the class. Uh, were, you know, it was one of those required things where you had to be there for X number of hours in order to complete the course. And so we just kind of sat there while the person was up there, you know, just kind of going through the slides and we were all in the back playing mini tower defense and stuff like that. So. Uh, they can be a lot of fun. Uh, this one's off to a good start so far. It has several different little modes and mini games through it. The main storyline, you know, you're progressing through different chapters of story uh, of boards. They progressively get harder. There's a theme to each chapter as you're moving through it, sort of focusing on different types of heroes and things like that that you're using. Um, to complete the first of the three milestones, uh, you have to get through chapter two. Uh, 2-6, which is right here. That one took me maybe two hours of gameplay total to get this far. And some of that is like tutorial stuff where they're explaining the game to you. Um, and then the second milestone is 3-6, which is kind of, again, also not that much further into the game. Uh, I think I hit that one with maybe another like two to th one to two or to three hours of gameplay total. So that's like four to five hours to get to the second milestone, uh, which isn't bad at all, especially for a sponsored stream, right? Not having to get too invested in the game and being able to complete two out of the three milestones, add some money to our prize pool, which doesn't all go to me. You know, I give a bunch of it back to you guys who are participating. Um, if you do participate, obviously either, you know, uh, should stop and caveat that, uh, once you get to this 3.6 milestone here, you unlock the ability to join a guild. So if you are online and playing, uh, there's the guild. It's 2187 Tiberium. You can message me in-game somehow or just post or whatever like that with your name, whether it's uh, here on Twitch or on Discord, and I can invite you to the guild. And then there's like we can take on like raid boss dragons and stuff and try and kill them together. And that'll get us some more cool prizes. But, um, you know, obviously people who do participate, thank you, first off, for doing it. And then please send me uh, screenshots of what you, once you're done, like, hey, this is me, I got this far, yada yada, um, because we will... Uh, some of our raffles and things that we're going to give back will be exclusive for people who participated, and some of them will be open and we'll just give out to people on the channel. Uh, but obviously I do want to say thank you to the people who helped facilitate this by giving them some exclusive raffle drawings. So, 
Um, the game itself, again, like I said, has several different modes, uh, little things that you can do, but let's just go through, let's pick a level here. Let's go to the next level I'm working on here. Actually, I should go back and try to explain a little more first about the heroes. So you've got different heroes. There are, there are different classes. You've got ranged attackers. You've got melee attackers. You've got healers. Um, those are your three basic classes. Some of them are ranged in terms of like they use bow and arrows or, or weapons versus some of them use spells. So you get a little bit of a, a flexibility there. Uh, they have different things to level them up. You can get them different gear. That'll boost their stats as well. Again, all sources of things that a lot of role-playing games have, right? And this is also, because the game is free to download, this is where the monetization would come in. You know, buying things to level up your heroes faster, accessories to make them stronger, so that way you can, you know, do more content. Uh, some of the other modes that are available, there's an arena mode where you can battle other players. That's over here. Um, this one's a little bit different, though, because you're not just taking on another player like we'll do one right now um, like it's not you're fighting against another player and taking on their army you're basically trying to um, see who can kill stuff faster on your side of the field so this guy right here in the middle he's the judge so we're going to put our guys out there's a cooldown timer you know you can't just deploy everybody at once you can only deploy people. This is their deploy costs. Right now I'm only at six. Every couple of seconds I get an extra point. So because I killed all the hostiles first against the other player, it tends to, especially when you're doing this automatically against the computer, it tends to put other people's stuff out here as opposed to up here. So you're not shooting them when they're coming out of the portals and when they're being spawned. They're waiting till they get all the way over here, so you kind of win most of the time when you're doing this arena mode, at least as far as I've seen so far. Maybe there's a way to customize it if you get really involved in it, so that way you can make it so that this doesn't happen, so that way you have a better chance of actually winning. But essentially what this is, is because I killed all of my guys first, this guy's attacking their base until they kill all of their hostiles. And then we go to the next round. And if their base dies, they lose. And I win. And then I get prizes and rewards. But that other person isn't actually sitting there. I think it's the computer auto-playing for them. And it doesn't always make the best decisions. There are also raid formats that you can do where you can try to grind for promotion materials to level up your people, experience to level up your people, different gear to equip them better, uh, or guild bosses that you can also fight, which will also give you uh, more materials and loot. And then there is the campaign mode, which is kind of the storyline mode, which is what we were working on before. We're going to give this one a try. I think I'm over my head. I'm a little over my head here. Let me see if I can level up anybody or upgrade anybody first before I do that one. It does give you a little warning about your power levels and stuff too. Like, hey, you might have a tr trouble with this one. Let me see if I can upgrade anything. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this, when you are trying to level up some of your hero's skills, it doesn't let you pick which skill you want to upgrade. It's random which one it assigns the upgrade point to. Again, adding a little RNG is a, sort of a way I, perhaps to monetize things because if you really want to upgrade this skill and you keep randomly upgrading this other one, well, then you might buy a pack or something that has materials in it so you can try and do more upgrades. There is an in-game store where you can buy stuff with gold or gems, which you get naturally through the game by doing stuff. You can also refresh this if you don't like what, what the other options are. Um, and then there are different ones. There's a guild shop. That arena that we were just doing gave me different coins, which I can cash in over here. So there's multiple little stores and things like that, depending on what part of the game you're participating in. You're going to get a currency that you can then redeem. I know we're all, but at least it's only like four or five currencies. It's not like 75. So. 
this is at least a little bit better. There are different quests that you can do, different accomplishments and achievements. As you hit those, you'll claim different rewards for free in-game, which will help you advance. Uh, and a lot of this stuff you'll just naturally get. Some of it's daily, weekly, some of it are monthly goals. And as you do it, you'll get things, you'll get gems, you'll get level ups, power ups, and things like that for your heroes. All things that should make your life a little easier. I don't have enough of those. Do I have, I don't have enough. Of, oh, I do have enough to do that. Let's do that. Let's level you up. Screw it. Let's take you both levels. Is it made by Scopely? It is not. That was also a criteria. Uh, I don't know who makes this game. Let's see if it says in here somewhere. Um, I've noticed that some of the things, some of the characters and some of the screens are in what I'm guessing is Chinese. So it's certainly possible. But let's see who makes this game. Watcher of Realms. Made by... Moonton Games. Okay. Let's find out who they are. Moonton Games is a Chinese multinational video game developer based out of Shanghai, China. It is best known for the mobile multiplayer online battle arena game Mobile Legends Bang Bang released in July of 2016. Okay, let's see what else they got. Tower Defense game Magic Rush Heroes. They did that one back in 2015. Uh, Mobile Legends. Yep. Became the most popular game in Southeast Asia. Okay, for a time. It's got some global offices and is expected to have over 1,500 employees. A couple of different versions of Mobile Legends. Uh, Watcher of Realms was released, it looks like, in 2023. Okay. All right, so that's a little bit about them and the maker of them. Not Real Venom, thank you very much for the follow and welcome on in. Compared to Raid, it's way better. Yeah, this game so far seems like it's pretty fun, pretty cool. Taking you're someone who usually plays this game quite a bit. So hey, welcome on in. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we're just uh, we're trying it out as a sponsored ship, and we'll see if it sticks. If we like it. But I have a feeling I might lose this one. But you know what? Let's 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 give her a shot. I might need to level up some other heroes. Oh, right. So now with this particular board, I've gotten to the point now where to make the things a little more challenging. So you, you're you limited to where you can set up your heroes. Um, your ranged people can only go up on these platforms, uh, and as long as there's no obstructions in the way. And your, your melee heroes, your tanks and things like that, can only go on ground spots, and even then sometimes it's restricted in terms of where you can actually put them. Um, to make the levels even more challenging, sometimes they throw in different uh, obstacles or hazards or things like that. Uh, one of the boards I was doing, there was like a poisonous gas, so your heroes would slowly lose hit points. So you'd have to keep healing them. And this particular one right now, they've upgraded. These are spheres that cast poison spells uh, that have a radius. So if I'm setting up my heroes near them, they will continuously poison me and I make myself make my guys die so the hostiles that are going to be attacking are going to be spawning out of these red portals 
They are trying to get over here to steal my blue or destroy my blue crystals. If they do that, I lose. So I have to stop them from doing that. And typically on the early levels, you kind of just park your guys right here, right in front of it. And be like, okay, great. They'll walk across the screen. They'll get to my guys. I'll kill them. They'll die. Huzzah. Hopefully that's the case, right? Hopefully my guys are good enough to destroy them before they kill me. But now the new wrinkle here is with these poison generators... I have to be very selective about where I want to set them up. So there's a little more strategy involved. I can't just park my guys where I normally would. I have to kind of figure out exactly how and where I want to put them uh, to avoid some of this stuff. And I can click on that, and it will show me the radius of where. So if I can see this one here, that one reaches to this line, so this one's protected. But that one's got that. That one doesn't have that covered either. Okay, so that first row here, you're okay. Uh, the other thing too is when you set your heroes out, you have to point, pick a direction for them to face in, and that's the direction that they can attack things in. Uh, they don't have a 360 radius for attacking. They basically have a 45 degree angle, give or take, at which they shoot stuff at. which can be a little restrictive sometimes when you're talking about trying to fight stuff. So I can put him out here, and then you're out of range of that poison thing. And I can put my ranged guy up here, and he can give him some support and cover, but I am going to need to get him healed. Now, that little red arrow that you saw, that's kind of letting you know which way the next wave of attacks is coming from. You need to go there. I'm going to set you up in the back so you're out of range of that poison. Now, it looks like the poison thing has to charge up before it actually does it, so... I could... You can take your heroes off the field, but they have to wait for them to... There's like there's a countdown or a cooldown timer before they come back out. So that's another thing, too. And then some of them have special abilities, which are also fun. That's the blue bar. When that builds up... You get to do some cool specials. Usually a lot of them are area of attack effects, so that's also very helpful. Now in this case, no matter where I put him, he's going to be in range. So we're going to get attacked by this poison thing. Let's find out how bad it actually is. See that my guy went down there. And that guy made it through. And now he's got a fifty he's got a one minute cooldown before that guy is able to be redeployed back onto the field because he died. But it looks like I'm gonna beat the level, but I'm not gonna master the level. So you can as long as you kill enough of the... So there's 34 total things that are going to spawn. As long as three of them don't get to your crystals, you win the level. If three of them get there, well, then you lose. And you have to start over. If you let none of them get through, then it's like a perfect victory and you get bonus materials. So we beat the level, but I did let one guy get through, so it's not a perfect clear. So we're going to try that one again.
You can also speed it up to double speed. That makes the levels not take quite as long to get through. And sometimes it really does just come down to hero placement. I need you there. Screwed that up. So we're just going to let that poison go off, and while it's charging up, then I'm going to deploy my hero afterwards. See if that makes a difference. And then I can get my healer up here, and that can reach both of them now. So I'll help keep those guys alive. You've got longer range, so I can put you further in the back, away from that poison. This is letting me know when my guy's special abilities are charged up. This is not This is something that when you get to, I think, level or scenario 5 is when it actually unlocks this ability for you. Normally that's not here. You have to actually watch the bars yourself. But this one seems like it's going a little better. So I think I got my guys in the right spots this time around. And I'm sure here comes the big finale. There you go. So this is the basic fundamentals behind the game and what you do. And obviously, you know, boards get harder. Heroes get leveled up and get new abilities, get stronger in terms of the things that they attack and kill. And you just continue to progress yourself through the game. Uh, there's nine chapters in the main storyline. So I'm already about halfway through. Maybe there's more once you get to here. I don't know. Um, and then, like I said, you've got some of the other modes that you can do. Obviously, you've got the, the guild boss. You've got the different raid stuff. You've got the arena stuff. Uh, there's also a calendar of monthly events and things where they do special events and things that are going on throughout the day. Oh. You can unlock new heroes. Which is what I just did here, but uh, that's a handy cool little cut graphic scene. Okay. Okay. That's a four-star hero. That's a good one. No, 
Nice. Picked up some. I forgot about this whole thing. Hero reset. Oh. How much does this game cost? It's free to download. It's free to download, free to play. No money involved, unless you want to buy in-game stuff, in which case you come in here to the shop and you can buy better heroes, you can buy upgrade materials, you can buy, there's a battle pass, you know, there's a free track to it, and there's a paid track to it that gives you additional, you know, in-game currencies and things like that. This is the dragon, the dragon pass, as they call it. So, free to play, free to download. Just click the link there on the screen, uh, or again, if you're watching this later on YouTube, uh, I'll leave the link in the uh, video description. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to upgrade this, you'd come into the store. I don't know what the current currency conversion is. I'm assuming this is US dollars. I haven't actually gone that far and tried. It does take you out to a website, I think, if you want to make an in-game purchase. Uh, yeah, okay, so basically it's, yeah. Yes, I'm sure. I do not want to <laughs> pay you. So I guess whatever the equivalency is, it's converted, so basically it's 20 bucks. Or I could get the special one and get for 30 bucks and get even more stuff. Claimed my dailies. I've got a couple of weekly claims in here as well. Getting additional gear and whatnot. And then... This just refreshed, but there's nothing in here I want. So this is all rare material. So let's go check out my new hero that I just unlocked. I don't even know... Oh, that was in the shop. Was it? No. Where was I that I just... Oh, it was in the events tab. That was in the seven day. So I got a free for being so for playing for three days. I guess because I just hit my third day since I downloaded it on Tuesday night during our stream, and then Wednesday and Thursday. So now my timer just reset to start day three here. So now I was able to unlock this four star hero, which is the equivalent in our game of. Basically, I mean, this is an epic, a four-star hero is, is an epic quality. Uh, you've got, you know, one-star commons, you've got two-star uncommons, you've got three-star rares, which are pretty solid and usable. You've got four-star epic heroes, and then there are even, I think, five-star legendary heroes. I think you can go into the gallery and see them all. Yeah, there are these five-star legendary heroes as well. And there are ways through in-game materials and things like that that you can upgrade and sort of promote your heroes to make them better than what a traditional... Like, if I really like this guy, you know, but he's a four-star hero and he's kind of capped out at stuff, well, there are ways that you can acquire resources and things to promote him above that. So you're like, I don't want to give this guy up. See, I just promoted her. She got new skills. Now I can do it again. Now she got more skills. We can put some gear. Um, yeah, we can put that there. And I should have one of these. Uh, if your gear is from a matching set, you get a set bonus. You can also, you know, you can enhance it. Uh, the first couple levels of enhancing, it will tell you your success rate guaranteed. As you get higher, you'll notice that your success rate changes. So much like upgrading Forbidden Tech, there is a chance you could fail. However, the as you can see, I've got 600,000 gold, and this costs 450 to upgrade. So even if I fail, like it just did, it's a very minimal amount of materials that you're losing. And... At least in my experience so far, I've never failed twice in a row. I don't know if it's built into the game that way, for you not to fail twice in a row, but I can say it hasn't happened to me yet.
basically, there's a lot of things in this that are familiar to a lot of other games that I've played over the years, and games you guys have probably played too. So it's not a complete, you know, 180 shot in the dark of, oh, wow, I don't know what any of this stuff does. It's like, no, I've kind of seen some of these mechanics before. And whether it's one company, you know, paying homage to what another company has done over the years, or whatever the case is, is hard for me to say, but uh, I also need to level you up. Probably going to run out of materials here. So we got up to level 16. Okay. But this hero certainly does have a lot of potential. Oh, and that finished a quest, promoting a hero and enhancing my gear. There you go. I get some more stuff now. Uh, you are kind of limited in terms of the number of dungeons and stuff you can run by this stamina bar up here. It will slowly regenerate over time up to its cap, which for me right now is 115. But when you finish events and things like that, it will give you um, stamina boosts, which actually will put you above your cap sometimes. So I can run a lot of dungeons right now. The other feature that does unlock is this auto fight ability. So here's the fun thing too. If you beat a dungeon, it will save exactly what you did. And then you can come back to it later on and you can just hit the auto fight button and it will basically just recreate the battle for you exactly the way you played it last time. Hey, Deathkill, thanks for downloading it. Appreciate that. Nope. I appreciate it. Grab some food and uh, get off to work, but you got till next Tuesday. And like I said, it only takes a couple of hours of gameplay to get from to get through the first couple milestones. Getting to the fifth milestone, I fit it, I got there this afternoon, so we're talking about probably 10 to 12 hours total of playing. Um, again, trying out some of these different modes and stuff too. Uh, leveling up people through things like this, but uh, this auto fight thing, oh. like I said, it, it sort of does recreate what you did last time, almost exactly the way you did it last time, or exactly the way you did it last time, and you don't even have to be here and uh, doing anything, and it'll just play that part for you, and then when it's finished, it will give you your rewards, which is all you came in here for anyway, was these upgrade materials. And you can queue it up to do it for multiple times, too. If you do them one at a time, it doesn't cost you anything. If you want to run multiples of them, it will. you will have to use a um, an auto-fight chance. Right now, I have 30 of them. So I could queue it up for like five or ten times. And then, like, go get dinner. Go get something to eat. Go do my laundry. Go, you know, use the bathroom, whatever I needed to do and then come back and it will have run that simulation the exact same way five or ten times and given me all the rewards which is really what I wanted now in this case because I didn't do very well I'm gonna run it again oh whoops I didn't want to do the auto fight again that's fine we'll do the auto fight again um, but now that I've leveled up my heroes a little bit gotten some better abilities and stuff I'm going to manually run this simulation again. And when hopefully I do better this time around, it will give it will automatically then update and say, hey, you know, you did this better than last time. You did it faster or you got a better reward out of it. We're overwriting your previous, you know, saved fight for your to save it as your next auto fight. Um, if you do worse it gives you the option, it says, like, would you like to manually adjust your auto fight to this one? Um, I don't know why you'd want to, but it does give you the option. Which I think is a nice little feature.
And then for doing so, I got 7,200 uh, experience points, or experience potions, rather, which now I can come back here, go back into my hero screen, to that new hero I just got, and I can upgrade some levels here. Oh. So I got her up to 25 out of 40. Okay. So now she's actually got some decent stats and shouldn't be a liability out there on the battlefield. So now I'm going to go back. And now we're going to try and do this better than we had done before. We're going to add her to the group. There we go. Oh, and she's got a synergy bonus with somebody else, too. Thought you finished downloading it? So you, when you click on the link, it downloads the installer. And then when you open the installer, then it has to actually download the game. It takes a little bit longer. Okay. I will say, so far, I've gotten... Uh, more than a few times where I'm just sitting here playing this and I realize, like, uh, you've been playing this for like two hours, man. You're like, oh, crap. I did not realize that. Well, you're actually fairly low cost, too. But we're going to put the better ones out first. These are the guys I know kick some butt. Um, you've got a little more limited range. Okay. Uh, the tricky, it does have sound settings. They're in your player profile. I'll show you where those are as soon as we finish this up. But yes, the music and sound effects are very loud. Uh, we'll call them very dramatic. <laughs> They're very dramatic. Let's use that special ability. this guy out there. Okay. This was a good this was a good pickup. This was a good daily claim. Okay. You're eating a fourteen dollar omelet from IHOP? Nice. Oh good. Glad you found it, Tricky. Yeah, uh, IHOP suddenly got more expensive than I remember it. <laughs> IHOP used to be where you know, like IHOP like Denny's is where you could go eat for like, you know, seven, eight bucks and now it's like, oh, it's 15 for this, and yeah. I mean, everything got more expensive, but. All right, last round here. Got some special abilities almost charged up. And we did it. That fight actually went better. I finished with 16 seconds to spare. I killed every single hostile. So now I'm getting the maximum amount of XP, 3,800, which then gets doubled for finishing it. Two minutes and 42 seconds, which is better than 99% of players. And you can see here now it uploaded 
a new auto fight for me. So now next time I want to come in here and I click the auto fight, it will recreate that experience and give me my maximum rewards. So, Lloyd's in your planet. You like it so far? Yeah, it does seem, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun game. It's a fun diversion. And like I said, surprisingly, you'll lose complete track of time. Um, sound settings, just for those of you who might miss it, player profile down here at the bottom, settings. Uh, and then there's a settings button here, and you can turn off the music, sound effects, and any uh, voice from the NPC characters explain, like having text and explaining stuff to you. Um, there's also other things you can change in here with the graphics and stuff as well if you need it to run a little more smoothly depending on how good your computer is that you're running it on. There's also daily summoning things here where you can try and get additional officers. You can also convert gems, I'm sorry, heroes, to try and get additional people. The regular one here, you know, you've got your chance of two star, three star, four star, or five star, and it even does give you a drop rate. Well, would you look at that? So you can see what you're likely to get. 50% chance of getting a two-star hero, 37 and a half chance of getting one of these more common three-star heroes. If you want to try and get one of the best three-star heroes, there's only about a 4% chance of that happening. And then you've got a couple of four-star options in here as well. A pity timer. Ooh. When the Pity Timer is active, no legendary hero is summoned. The drop rate for a legendary will increase by 5% for the next time around. And we'll keep building up until you actually do get a legendary. So look at that. It's got a built-in counter that's basically telling you if you keep having bad RNG, it will feel sorry for you and basically eventually guarantee you eventually you will get a high quality item. And then you can go back and look at, here's what you've pulled previously, the last 300 summons. So you can go back and look at everything that you've gotten out of here. Most they've gotten a lot of three star and two star heroes. You get one free one every day. If you do spend gems to unlock them, it does uh, accumulate a summoning rewards over here, which eventually will give you more and more free shards to pull other people and other materials here. There is also a five-star summoning one over here. These are a lot harder to get the appropriate uh, materials for. You most likely have to buy stuff to get stuff out of here. Uh, there's a, obviously, I have earned uh, shards. You need like 30 shards equal one crystal. So I've got like 15 shards so far. So I've accumulated a little bit of something, but I haven't gotten enough to actually do a pull here yet. Um, and then there are other ways in the game, of course, to make your heroes even stronger. You can actually fuse some of your other heroes that you're not using and make this guy and buff him up even bigger. So it does have nice ways to sort of recycle your older content within the game to upgrade it to make stuff better. You know, if you keep getting the same hero over and over again, like I've got a whole bunch of this guy here, um... I guess you, you can eventually sell them. Like if I wanted to get rid of some of these guys, right? I can sell the crappy ones back for gold. Which I could then use in the shop because you're limited by how many heroes you can own. So if you do just keep getting a bunch of junk, 
you can just sell all the one stars. And I get 8,800 back. Okay. And obviously two star heroes and things like that are worth more. Um, the other thing that you can do is when you have a hero well, let's get rid of this. Um, when you have a hero that you have multiple copies of, if you happen to draw, you know, an extra copy of a of a hero, you can do this other thing over here called Awaken, which you basically merge the new card with the old card to give your hero additional stats and bonuses. And as you progress through here, you will get additional stats and things like that for awakening another hero. So, I'm liking it. I'm digging it. It's a fun little game. So, so far, this seems like it was at least a worthwhile effort for our sponsored stream this quarter. We're kind of going to do these quarterly, I think. Um, we did one back in October, so that was fourth quarter. And now here we're doing one at the end of March, first quarter. While we're waiting on this, let's go fight a dragon. I want to take you out and then we put you back there. There we go. But speaking of games, uh, Mrs. Tiberius is wondering if any of you guys have tried any new games lately and what you thought of them, if there's anything that you're liking and enjoying. Um, she's on the hunt for a new mobile game. And I'm currently, like we said, I'm you know keeping my options open in terms of uh, other fun games to stream and things like that as we see what happens over the next couple months with Star Trek Fleet Command. So if there's anything out there you guys are trying, uh, feel free to let me know. In the meantime, we're going to go fight a dragon. Actually, you've got better range. I need you back here. Your range is not as good. And there's also sometimes a limit to the number of heroes you can have deployed at one time. So even though I have 10 slots and 10 guys that I, I put in my team, I can only have eight on the field in this particular fight at once. With this particular guild boss here, I'm basically just killing the dragon over and over again. And it progressively gets stronger and stronger. At some point in time, it's going to try and do this like devastating spit ability, which is when you have to kill it really fast. Um, and then you basically knock it unconscious, and then you do a whole lot of extra damage while it's unconscious there. If you let that bar go all the way down and it does the devastating spit, it wrecks your party. It's a tremendous amount of damage that it does. Now, obviously, the goal of this being a guild thing would be is if you had other people in your guild, they would run this as well, and you would eventually, you know, from everybody doing enough damage to the, the dragon on their particular fight, um, would 
ultimately kill it. I think I'm probably going to take like 3 or 4% off of its total health. But I also pick up some nice little rewards for myself here in the process. See, there's that destructive spit again. Now he's knocked unconscious, so now we're just cranking through a whole bunch of levels, up to 62, 63, doing a whole lot of damage before he wakes back up. Just going to wait and save our special abilities again. Oh, somebody just hit a level, I think. Lloydson just cleared Chapter 3. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Scares the crap out of me every time it does it, but hey, it's a good scare, right? It's a good scare. You applied to the guild? Okay, awesome. Let me, uh, as soon as I finish this up here. Oh. I'll make sure to get you in there. Well, this is further than I've gotten before. Usually I get to, I would have only gotten to about 100, 110. I might actually make it the whole, whatever this fight was, four minutes or so. The dragon looks really mad. <laughs> He's like really ticked off. So he took one person out. Quick, throw somebody else in there. Let's get all the damage we can. Five seconds. Shoot him if you got him. Not bad. 141. Okay. That was good for 4.7% of the, the dragon's overall total health. So again, if there were more people in the guild, we would take this thing down. If we get it all the way down, we get better rewards. We actually get to open the chest, which could have all kinds of fun stuff in it. If you kill the dragon, you double the rewards. And it's got all kinds of fun stuff in here that you could get for doing this. And then obviously as you fight bigger dragons, you get better rewards. So I'm only you're only allowed two fights per day, so I'm done for the day. I did almost nine percent damage to this thing today by myself. Okay, I'll take it. We're getting there. The name of the guild is Tiberium. It has the guild tag twenty one eighty seven. And there's a guy right there. I'm assuming this is Lloydson. Uh, fun thing about changing your name, you can't do it automatically. If you want to change your name, you would come in here to your player profile, and you click this little guy here, and it requires a rename scroll. Which you actually have to buy from the shop. Now, you get it from the diamond shop. 
it costs you 20 red diamonds to buy it. Um, you know, so there's a little in-game currency there for you to change your name. You can't just do it whenever you feel like it. There's a little bit of a requirement or a mechanic to it, but I mean, it's 20 diamonds. It's like basically the equivalent of like if it charged you 20 latinum every time you wanted to change your name in Star Trek, it's not really a big deal. So uh, we got Lloydson in here now. Awesome. I also fought the boss two times, so that'll give us some extra stuff here. So we're moving along. You hope Scopely didn't hear that about changing, charging you to change your name? Maybe they should. Maybe that would stop so many people from going rogue, right? They're like, oh, I'll just change my name and be a jerk to people. And then I'll just change it back when I'm done. It's like, mm, yeah. I mean, we are, a lot of times we can already figure out who you are. But if it costs you to change your name, you probably have a little less of that going around. So. Right. <laughs> now suddenly now it, it 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 sounds a little better doesn't it right it's like oh man I really like if you get like one free name change a month or something like that or you know or there's a way to you know get a, a token for give us another token you get a name change token right everybody gets one <laughs> to get another token Put them in like an event store for like a hundred thousand currency. It's like you want to spend your event store currency to get a name change token. Otherwise, you're stuck with your name for a while. <laughs> it might help. By the way, if I didn't say so earlier, just Q, thank you for the uh, twenty-five bits. Hopefully, I said it, but I'm getting a little forgetful, so. What was the guild name? The guild name is Tiberium. The guild tag is 2187. So depending on what you're looking for here. You can search for either one. Um, you have, I think you have to get to milestone 3-6 before the guild stuff unlocks and lets you actually join one. Uh, it won't let you join a guild prior to getting that far in the campaigns and stuff, I think. That's where it started for me, I think, was when I hit that milestone. So it's not like you can just, oh yeah, I just, I, I created an account. And it's like, you actually have to play it for a couple hours. Maybe that's to stop, like, you know, new players from just, you know, uh, who don't know what they're doing, jumping into guilds or people making too many alt accounts. It's like, you actually have to level it up for a couple hours or something first before... You can do that, so. 3-6 is correct. That's where you got it, too? Okay. Yeah, and obviously when you get there, just look for it, and then I think there's a way to send a request to join, and uh, come on in. I have it set to private, I think. Maybe I should change that now. I didn't want to get bombarded with, like... You know, new players. Did your name change? Yes, it did. It now shows you as Lloydson, member, right there. Instead of player 8472. Just 
just leave that right there on the screen for you guys for another second or two if you want to write it down or anything like that. So 